Hi everyone and welcome to the next Orca lesson. Today we will be learning about the polar regions and this lesson is the third in a set of three lessons about wildlife of the polar regions and in this lesson we're going to look at wildlife of these areas and their adaptations to this harsh environment. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. So we already know that whales and dolphins are perfectly adapted to the cold waters that they live in or visit and that they either adapt to the harsh temperatures of polar winters or they migrate away from them. But let's have a look at some other species of animals that live in these cold environments. So first of all, let's look at a couple of examples of marine mammals. So we already know about whales and dolphins, but what about other marine mammals? So marine mammals are aquatic mammals that rely on the ocean to survive. So they include animals such as seals, whales, manatees, sea otters and polar bears. So what do these other marine mammals do that is different to whales and dolphins? So what do sea otters, polar bears and seals do that whales and dolphins don't? They don't spend all of their time at sea like whales and dolphins do. So not only are they subject to the cold water when they swim, but they are also subject to the absolutely freezing cold and strong winds at the poles. So these animals that live in both the land and the sea need to be really, really well adapted to living in these areas. The polar bear is classed as a marine mammal despite spending most of its time on land. And it's classified as a marine mammal because it relies on the sea for food. These powerful predators typically prey on seals, such as ringed seals, bearded seals, and depending on where they live in the Arctic, harp seals and hooded seals as well. They'll also hunt live young walruses and beluga whales. And they will also scavenge on carcasses that they might find of fully grown walruses, narwhals, bowhead whales and dolphins. So this picture of the polar bear here is actually eating the carcass of a white beaked dolphin. So in search of food, polar bears forage over areas of shifting, cracking ice where seals might surface to breathe air. They also stalk ice edges and breathing holes, waiting for animals to surface to breathe, such as seals or dolphins. These arctic giants are the masters of their environment and have no natural enemies. So the polar bear is the only bear that is classified as a marine mammal because it's the only species of bear that relies solely on food from the ocean. And polar bears are perfectly adapted to the Arctic. Polar bears roam the Arctic ice sheets and are very strong swimmers and their large front paws, which they use to paddle, are slightly webbed, which helps them to swim well. Some polar bears have been seen swimming hundreds of miles from land, though they probably cover most of that distance by floating on sheets of ice. They can also close their nostrils when they dive underneath the water. They depend on a thick coat of white fur, which is hollow, and by being hollow, that hair can trap air and keeps them nice and warm. The fur even grows on the bottom of their paws, which protects their paws against cold surfaces and provides really good grip on the ice. The bear's stark white coat provides camouflage in surrounding snow and ice. And along with the fur, they also have a thick layer of blubber, just like whales and dolphins, to keep them even warmer. Remember, blubber is that thick layer of fat, which helps to keep marine mammals warm. But underneath their fur, polar bears also have black skin and the colour black absorbs heat. So this black skin soaks in the sun's warming rays. So females dig dens into deep snow drifts, which provide protection and insulation for their cubs in the Arctic elements. 
They give birth in winter, usually to twins, and young cubs live with their mothers for about 28 months to learn the survival skills of the far north. Females aggressively protect their young, but receive no help in bringing them up from their male mates. So I hope you'll agree that the polar bear is perfectly adapted to life in the Arctic. And another species that is perfectly adapted to this freezing cold environment is the walrus. Now this moustached marine mammal is capable of living both in the ocean and on land. Have you ever wondered why the walrus has two tusks? This is another adaptation. A walrus can use its tusks to pull itself out of the water onto the ice or to break holes in the ice for breathing when it's swimming underneath ice packs. Tusks are also used for defence against other walruses and other predators. Males can grow tusks up to 100 centimetres long, so these are really long tusks. A walrus is also an excellent swimmer and can dive to 90 metres deep and hold its breath for about 30 minutes. That beautiful moustache of a walrus is lined with rows of up to 700 whiskers. These sensitive hairs help the walrus find shellfish and clams deep at the bottom of the ocean, where it can be too dark to see. They also have a very, very thick blubber layer to protect it from the cold water, and this blubber also acts as a shield from attacks from other animals as well. The bottom of each of their flippers is really rough, which creates traction for anchoring a walrus onto the ice and makes it easier for it to walk around on those front two flippers. So just like marine mammals, birds are also warm-blooded. So that's enough of the marine mammals now. So now we're gonna head all the way down to Antarctica for this next creature. And you guessed it, it's penguins. So this is a chinstrap penguin, but all penguin species have the following adaptations to the cold. Penguins are flightless birds, but are excellent swimmers. And they have webbed feet to help them propel through the water. Their bodies are streamlined to reduce drag in the water and their wings, shaped like flippers, help them to zoom through the water at speeds of up to 20 miles an hour. Unlike other species of birds, which have hollow bones to help them fly, penguins have heavy, solid bones, and that's to help them dive underneath the water. And this extra bit of weight acts like a diver's weight belt, allowing them to stay underwater to hunt for prey. As well as having thick skin and lots of blubber as well under their skin to help keep them warm, their dark colored feathers on a penguin's back also serve to absorb heat from the sun, again, helping them to warm up. And one of the ways penguins keep extra warm is by having a very waterproof outer feather layer and a dry, fluffy feather layer underneath. It's like having a waterproof jacket with a warm inner layer underneath that. Penguin feathers are overlaid and waterproofed and there's air trapped underneath the feathers. So even when they're diving and that helps them to keep them warm. These feathers are packed in really tightly and they also waterproof their feathers using oil which they get from a gland near their tail. Some penguins have a hundred feathers per square inch of skin. So where do you think penguins can lose heat from? We know that their feathers and their skin absorb heat and help them to keep heat in, but where do you think penguins might lose heat from? They can lose heat from their beak and their feet, but this isn't a bad thing, it can actually be quite a good thing. By having areas that heat can escape, it means that they are able to regulate their temperature, stopping them from getting too hot. It's quite hard to imagine overheating in temperatures well below freezing. But that's just because they are experts in keeping warm in these conditions. There are actually arteries in the penguin's legs that are able to adjust blood flow to their feet. 
The arteries stop blood flow when it's really cold, meaning less blood has to travel through the cold feet and get cold, helping to keep the penguin warm. In addition to acting as temperature control, penguin feet are bare for another reason as well. When the penguin is too warm, the opposite happens and the arteries open up and allow more blood flow to the feet, cooling them off. Besides this built-in mechanism, the penguin can also control their feet's temperature simply by huddling down around their feet to keep them warm, or they rock backwards and forwards on their feet and their tails to prevent their feet getting too cold. Penguins also need their feet to grip the ice and to help steer when they're swimming in icy cold waters. Another adaptation which penguins are famous for is their huddling. The masters of these are the emperor penguins. So to survive temperatures below minus 50 degrees Celsius and gale force winds above 180 kilometers an hour during the Antarctic winter, emperor penguins form tightly packed huddles of thousands of penguins. And the penguins can actually coordinate their movements to give all members of the huddle a chance to warm up. So you can imagine the penguins right in the middle are really toasty warm, but the penguins around the outside might get a bit chilly. But the penguin huddle constantly rotates around. So the penguins on the outskirts regularly muscle their way into the huddle because they face the direct hit of Antarctica's icy wind chill. But penguins on the inside get too hot, so after a while they need a little room to cool off, so they'll then move to the outside of the huddle with the penguins on the outside moving into the middle. So the huddle is constantly moving and changing with lots of penguins waddling around to allow all penguins to warm up and then cool down again. Each penguin finds a place to tuck in. The chicks are also born in the depths of the Antarctic winter and they do get protected by the parents' brood pouch which is just above their feet but it's also the huddling that keeps them alive too. There's one last species that we're going to mention and it's one we must mention when it comes to migration and that's the Arctic tern. The tiny Arctic tern makes the longest migration of any animal in the world meaning that it never actually experiences the winter. By moving continually between the Arctic summer and the Antarctic summer, the Arctic tern sees more daylight than any other animal on Earth. This means a round trip of up to 35,000 kilometers or 22,000 miles every year. How amazing is that that this animal travels from pole to pole just to avoid the winter? So there are so many other species of animals that are adapted to the cold Arctic and Antarctic environments. These are just a few of my favourite examples. So I would encourage you to do some research and find some more. Other great examples include the snowy owl, Arctic fox, the Arctic hare, reindeer and musk ox as well. Okay, to recap, we know that animals that live in the Antarctic and the Arctic are perfectly adapted to survive freezing cold air and water temperatures. The polar bear, walrus and penguin species are brilliant examples. And the Arctic tern makes the longest migration of any animal to avoid the harsh winter conditions entirely. Thank you so much for listening to another one of Orca's lessons. Please do visit our website to find out more. It's orcaweb.org.uk. If you have enjoyed Orca lessons and you're able to make a donation to help us continue these lessons into the future and also to help us with our vital conservation work of these incredible animals, please do also visit the website. All the information is on there. Thank you very much.